In this video, we're going to look at differentiation. Here I've drawn a curve y equals x squared. And what if I wanted to find out the gradient at a particular point, just say here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here. Well, as you can see, the gradient's going to change depending on where you are in this curve. Because it's a curve, the steepness is changing. Here, it's quite a large negative gradient. Here, it's a negative gradient. Here, the gradient would actually be equal to zero. It's not changing height here. Here, it's positive. Here, a bit more positive, and so on. Well, let's just focus on this particular point here. Well, if I wanted to find out the gradient at this particular point, that's the same as the gradient of the tangent at that point. I've just drawn a tangent to touch the curve at that particular point. So the gradient to a curve is the same as the gradient of the tangent at that particular point. So let's have a look at working out the gradient of, of the tangent at a particular point of a curve. So let's just say here I wanted to work out the gradient at this particular point. Well, I've drawn the tangent. Uh, the only thing is I don't know about any points, uh, apart from one point, I don't know any other points in this tangent on the line. So what I could do is actually, I could work out the gradient of a chord. So I could choose the point on the curve and another point on the curve, and I could work out the gradient of that chord. And as you can see, as I bring the chord closer and closer and closer to the point where I want to work out the gradient, the, the, tan uh, the, the uh, chords get cl uh, more and more uh, closer to being parallel to the uh, to the tangent. So let's actually work out the gradient of some of these chords. Let's just say, for instance, I want to work out the gradient of the tangent here, okay? So I want to work out the gradient of the tangent at two, four, the coordinate two across, four up. So what I've done is I've just chosen a point on the curve, three across nine up, okay? Three squared is nine. And I'm gonna work out the gradient of this red uh, dotted line, this chord. So the gradient, remember, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, y2 would be nine, subtract four, and I'm gonna divide that by three, subtract two. And then that would give me nine subtract four is equal to five, and three subtract two is equal to one. So the gradient of this line is five, which is quite large. As well, let's bring it a bit closer, okay? So let's try this particular point here. So instead of being three across, I'm only gonna go 2.5 across, so. 2.5 squared is 6.25, so let's work out the gradient. Six off this uh, red line, this red chord. Uh, 6.25 subtract four, that's y2 minus y1, over 2.5 subtract two. And whenever I work that out, that gives me 2.25 divided by 0.5, but then that would be equal to 4.5. So as you can see here, the gradient's getting uh, less steep, okay, for this uh, dotted line. And it's getting closer to the steepness of this black line, the tangent, at the coordinate 2, 4. Let's make the chord even closer. So this time, I'm going to go a tiny distance across. Two, I'm going to go across 0 0.01, so I'm going to go from 2 to 2.01. And 2.01 squared is 4.0401. So let's work out what the gradient of this red line would be. So it's going to be 4.0401 subtract 4 over 2.01 subtract 2. Whenever I work that out, it's going to be top line is going to be equal to 0.0401 divided by 0.01. And whenever I work that out, that would be equal to 4.01. Now, as you look at the gradient of these chords, it's gone from 5 to 4.5 to 4.01. And as you bring this closer and closer and closer to this point, the gradient will get closer and closer and closer to the gradient of the tangent, which looking at it probably is four. So the gradient is equal to four for this line. Okay, the only thing is this is quite a time consuming method of doing it. Let's actually do it, and what if I wanted to change the point? So let's do it for any point in this curve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a particular point and I'm gonna call it X across so x across, and I'm going to, uh, its height would be, well, x squared is x squared. I'm gonna choose a point across a tiny, 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 tiny amount. Let's call that tiny, tiny, tiny amount h. So if I go across that tiny amount h, it'll be x plus h, a tiny amount across. And the height, remember, I'm gonna square this to find the height, so that's going to be x plus h squared. So let's work out the gradient of this chord, this dotted blue chord, 
between those two points and let's pretend they're really really close together and remember it's because it's x and x squared it could be any particular position on this curve so y2 which would be x plus h squared subtract uh, y1 which is x squared over x2 which is x plus h subtract x1 which is x and let's work out what that would be so expanding this brackets remember x plus h bracket x plus h expanding that would be x squared plus xh or hx uh, plus uh, let's go for xh again i've got this the way around hx plus h squared and let's just switch these around so x squared plus hx plus hx plus h squared and then these would be x squared plus 2hx plus h squared so the top line becomes x squared plus 2hx plus h squared and i'm subtra uh, subtracting x squared now it's all over x plus h minus x now on the top line you will see that the x squared and the x squared will subtract to give zero and the x subtract uh, x would also uh, cancel out so we're going to be left with 2 h x plus h squared all over h so let's divide through by h so h h and h will cancel so we're going to be left with 2 x plus h now we wanted to go over a tiny 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 amount and as we bring this point closer and closer to it, in other words, as our tiny amounts get closer to zero, our answer gets more accurate. So let's pretend, or let's say that h is getting closer to zero. That means that our answer, you would get 2x plus, and a number that's getting close to zero. So that means that our answer would be 2x. This would get so close to zero, we could just ignore it. So that means that the gradient at any particular point on this curve is two times the x value. So if we go back to that previous example we had, the gradient here where the x value was equal to two, and where we had two times x is equal to the gradient of the tangent, well, two times two is four, and that was the gradient of this line, this straight line, this tangent four. Okay, so this means that if I wanted to work out the gradient of this particular point here, this tangent, well, I would do two times the horizontal position, well, x is equal to zero, two times zero is zero, and as you can see, the gradient of that tangent is zero. If I had the coordinate minus 1, and I wanted to work out the gradient of the tangent at minus 1 there, I would do 2 times minus 1, so it means the gradient of the tangent would be minus 2. If I choose a point over here, just say x is equal to 5, well the gradient of the tangent there would be 2 times x, so 2 times 5, which is equal to 10. So that means we can now work out the gradient of the tangent at any particular point of the x squared curve really easily, because we have done this process. Okay, so let's just say I want to do the same thing for the y equals x cubed graph. In other words, I want to find the gradient of the tangent at any particular point on this curve. So the horizontal position is x, and x cubed will be the height, so that's x cubed. And let's choose its point a tiny distance across, so x plus h. And then whenever you uh, cube that, it'll be x plus h cubed. Okay, and let's just work out the gradient of that chord. So again, it's y2, x plus h cubed, subtract y1, x cubed, over x plus h, subtract x. Now, let's expand this. So we're going to have x plus h, x plus h, x plus h. Okay, and then you would expand this. So expanding the first bracket would be, as we have seen earlier, x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And then you would expand this and simplify it. And if you've done that, you'd get x cubed plus 3hx squared plus 3h squared x plus h cubed. So that's what that would be if you expanded it. So on the top line, we're going to get x cubed plus 3hx squared plus 3h squared x plus h cubed subtract our x cubed and then that's going to be all over x plus h subtract x now again you will see those first term or those terms will cancel and on the bottom line they will cancel so we'll be left with 3h x squared plus 3h squared x plus h cubed all over h so let's cancel that out. So the H's cancel. And then you're going to be left with 3x squared plus 
3hx plus h squared. But as we said, h is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So it tends to do zero. So that means that this will tend to zero and this will tend to zero. So they will have very minimal effect on our answer. And that means that the gradient of any particular point on the x cubed graph will be 3x squared. Now this process of going from the curve y equals x cubed to the gradient is called differentiation. And the notation is dy by dx. Okay, and that stands in the change in y over the change in x. Well, have you seen we're working out the gradient, dy by dx, the change in y, the change in x. So that means that dy by dx is equal to 3x squared. So to differentiate it, let's have a look at what happens. Oh, just before we do that, this is a formula which you may see for what we've just been doing. Okay, and it's in the dy by dx, the differential, when we differentiate that process of going from the equation of the curve to its gradient, that process is called differentiation. Differentiation. Okay, so going from the curve to its gradient of the tangent is called differentiation. Um, that process, what we've been doing, we, you could maybe see it like this. And what it's saying is it's saying the delta x, um, instead of using h, delta sometimes means a very small amount. So as uh, you go across a small amount, rather than doing x plus h, you could do x plus delta x, subtract, uh, so the function of that, so that's the height, subtract the height whenever it's equal to x, that's just what we've been doing over delta x. Now as you notice, we always had h on the bottom line here, okay? You always had h on the bottom line, that's where the delta x comes from. So this is another version of the formula, and you find the limit as delta x tends to zero, in other words, as our h tends to zero, okay? So that's just another way of doing what we've just done, okay? Now as you do that for some curves, this is what you find. So if we do it for x squared, we get two x. As we differentiate x cubed, we get three x squared. As we differentiate x to the four, we get four x cubed, if you were to do it for that. If you were to do it for x to the n, you would get n x to the n minus one. So that is how, that is, uh, this is the process of differentiation. And a really common thing that you're gonna be doing is, or a really um, a thing that you're gonna be frequently doing is differentiating x's with a power. And what you do is you bring the power down and you reduce the power by one. So that's the process of differentiation. So if I had y is equal to x to the seven, whenever you differentiate it, you get the dy by dx is equal to seven, x to the six, bringing the power down, reducing the power by one. And this is great because it means we can work out the gradient of any particular point on this curve by taking the horizontal position, the x coordinate, doing it to the power of six and times it by seven. Have a look at the other videos in differentiation to see this in practice.